Okay, so I've, I've been trying new intro songs out the last couple weeks. I, I don't think anybody liked last week's. Admittedly, it was horrible. Let's try this one. It's the photosynthetic ground show. This is the intro. Hmm? How's it going, folks? Another week here on the Grow Show. And, uh, well... If you've been following the Grow Show since it started about eight weeks ago, granted the channel's been running for about six months, 1,200 subscribers just hit that a couple days ago. Thank you so much if you're part of the uh, community. If you're not, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button. Anyway, eight weeks ago when I first started up the Grow Show, this entire space was covered in snow. And now I've been out here all day tending to my gardens. These are a no-till style garden. This is where I do my veggies and stuff. I would eventually like to do no-till in the grow room, but again, I'm still a little uh, soil shy because of pest issues not too long ago. Doesn't matter. Anyway, this week we're doing a couple things. We're gonna be talking about, of course, the current grow grass, and we're gonna be doing community spotlight, but twist this time and then first off let's talk about grow gear video 3 accessorizing that grow space all right out here in the grow room grow gear guide video number three well number three in the series anyway i'm not sure how many i'm gonna make uh, the point is if you haven't seen the first two videos go check them out links in the description on the screen uh we'll give you a minute and now that you're back. So I'm I'm going to be talking about accessories and I'm trying to sort of do this over how you would phase and require these things over the course of your grow. The initial part of course is you've you've gone through, you've gotten a light, you've got a grow space figured out, you've got something for air movement, you've got something for watering, you've you've got a grow medium determined. Now you want to get started growing. Well, the first thing that you're going to want to do is think about cleanliness and safety. Okay. Now, if you're going to spend any amount of time in that grow space, and you will, because, you know, these things do take maintenance and that sort of thing. I spend like an hour a day in the grow room. Some days two, some days three, some days maybe a half an hour, but there's usually something in here I have to do. So if I'm in here regularly, um, I need to actually get new shades because these are just green ones. But these are for if you're using the blurple lights, uh, these will help protect your eyes. But regardless, you should have some sort of eye protection on when you're in the grow room to pre protect those peepers. Now, cleanliness is a super important thing when you're getting started growing. Even if you've got brand new gear and you've never used it before, the first thing you want to do is give everything a good clean with some diluted bleach. Uh, oh, and those glasses I didn't mention. Uh, you know, you can get them around 20, 30 bucks. Uh, I'm trying to give prices, or at least what I paid on here. Uh, I'm in Canada though, eh? Hey, so sometimes we pay more for stuff, you know? Uh, anyway, bleach. You want to give everything a good cleaning with bleach as you're getting started. This in ensures that nice sterile environment, that healthy environment for your plants to get started in, right? There's nothing worse than starting off with some sort of pathogen. Something that's gonna hurt your plants. Ooh. So bleach. Oh, knocking stuff around. I'll talk about what that is in just a minute here. So bleach, cleanliness. Give everything a good clean. And sorry, this isn't this isn't straight bleach. This is diluted bleach. I do it like ten to one. Oh, my phone's buzzing there and falling over. Now the other two things when I talk about cleaning that I use, uh, isopropyl alcohol. This is basically used the entire time, right? You wanna get a couple of bottles of this early on. You're gonna use this mostly for cleaning parts and this and that and the other. And again, making things sterile. Uh, I buy this Costco, I get four of these for 10 bucks. Uh, when they're in stock, of course, Corona makes this kind of stuff hard to come by right now. I'm glad I had a stock before. The other thing is hydrogen peroxide. I actually put a cap full of this every time I do humidifiers. It helps that sponge from uh, building up, as well as uh, I believe people can use this for doing seed stuff. Uh, we're gonna be doing some stuff on how to sprout seeds, uh, old seeds here, uh, probably next week. Uh, but otherwise, this is uh, this is very good to have as well. Uh, I think I, I pay like four fifty for four bottles of this again. That's cool. So that stuff. Now you you're clean. You're you're good to go. You want to start growing. Well, there's going to be a couple of things that you need to do beforehand. Now, if you're using just any old soil, I don't know. Maybe you want to test it, or if you're you know doing third or fourth grow, uh, soil test kit. Now I I don't 
actually use this a whole heck of a lot because I haven't had the need for it. Um, I got this for 25 bucks. It's got 40 tests. It does pH of your soil, your nitrogen test, your phosphorus test, your potassium test, all of that for one low, easy price. So, uh, the point is, is it's good to have testing stuff to to know where your deficiencies might be, um, especially if you're running into something. This isn't necessary right off the hop. This is just, well, I don't know, if you're starting your grow, soil testing, you might want to do it. Throw that in there. Uh, the other two things, because we're talking about measuring things, are the pH meter and the total dissolved solids meter. Now, you haven't sprouted your seeds yet, right? We're, we're not quite there, but it's really, really good to know what you're facing in terms of pH in your water and, and your PPMs in your water. Uh, now, if you're growing hydro, you're going to totally need this stuff. Let me explain something. I don't pH my water. I'm an organic grower. I don't need to. But I know what the pH is of my water. I know what the PPMs are of my water. And that's why I don't have to pH it, because I've already tested that. I know what's going on. Now, these, these guys aren't aren't expensive. I, I got both of them for under $20. This this one came with a calibration kit, so I use that from time to time, keep that in calibration. Uh, this one didn't, so again, it's it's a $20 tool. It's it's not going to be super, super accurate. Uh, I think there's like the, was it the Blue Labs? They make some really banging stuff, but it's way expensive, my friends. Um, I don't even know if that was the right word. I don't know why I said that. I apologize if I have offended anybody. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what's going on. I'm just talking about stuff. Whatever. Here we go. Okay. So, measuring stuff. Good to have because you want to know what's going on there. It, Especially if something goes wrong, the first thing you're going to do is measure stuff. You're you're ready to go. You've got your measuring stuff figured out. You've got things cleaned up. Okay. So first thing, are you going to do seeds? Are you going to do seeds or are you going to do clones? Well, let's let's talk about it from a seed perspective because some of this stuff uh, is a little bit easier when you've you've got actually got a cutting that you're going to just take and, and transplant. So seeds. I just got this. I love this thing. Listen, 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 listen. Oh, oh. Huh? Huh? vacuum sealed. I'm keeping my seeds in a vacuum sealed container. Now this is actually for coffee, but I'm now going to call it the seed vault. <laughs> and in here, now I've opened this up a bunch of times. It's actually uh, not usually the 51%. It's, it's, it's been sitting around 40. I want to get some more desk in here. The idea is to keep the humidity low to make these seeds last as long as possible. Um, this thing was like 20 bucks. Now this is, again, nothing that you really need to start growing. You can keep your seeds in a Ziploc bag because that's what I was doing for a quite a while but the, the point is um, you know luxury item not necessarily needed to start growing but good to have keep your seeds dry um, so yeah this guy's can you see here these little pucks I picked up five of these for 15 bucks off the Amazon there and I keep these in my jars for when I'm curing I uh, they're handy to have they're little humidity buttons right so anyway, we're gonna stick that back in there <laughs> awesome so you've got seeds, you, you're going to start them growing in something. You can start them growing a variety of ways. You can start them growing in paper towel. Uh, you can plunk them into a, let me pick it up here. One of these guys, these little Grodan cubes. Uh, these are actually more handy for cloning. That's why I have them. I don't do my seeds in here, but you can. You can totally start a seed in here. Uh, or you can just start it directly in your, your grow medium. So I've got a little cocoa here, a little pre-mixed, wonderful, wonderful, super soilless mixture. You can just put your seeds directly to that, or you can start off with something like this, these little trays. Now these grow down cubes, these are wicked cheap. You get like 30 of these for like 10 bucks, or you can get these trays. These are, I, I paid like $2 for, I got what, a lot, 16, 30, many, man, I can't math. There's 32 here. And they fall apart quite easily too. So start your seedlings, you're getting them going. Seedling mat, oh, one other thing, labels. Get labels, put labels on your stuff. You don't want to lose track of what your plants are. So you've got your, your seedlings started now, your seedlings, it's it's in its little mix, or it's in its grow down cube, you're just getting going. I use a seedling mat. This thing just, just adds a little bit of warmth to the environment from the bottom, keeps those roots warm as they're going. Awesome stuff. Now, yeah, oh, right, we can talk about these. If you're a hydro grower, um, hydroton cube, or hydroton pebbles, clay pebbles, clay little hyd and net cups. Uh, the grow down cube goes in the net cup. You can put the you can put the hydroton in the net cup. You can put the hydroton in here. It doesn't really matter. 
So ultimately, this is the basic propagation stuff that you're gonna need. You need your little bit of medium or some Grodan cubes, you need some seeds, and you need something to put them in. And this is gonna be the first couple of weeks until you know, you're ready to transplant. We're gonna talk about transplant here in one second. Uh, the last thing I didn't really talk about here is stem root. Now, uh, if you're doing cloning, if you're taking cuttings from an existing plant, then you'll know a little bit about this stuff. This, this is a, a, a root stimulating powder. Uh, IBA rooting powder. Yeah, anyway, I paid like three bucks for this. I've had this for a couple of years. Like you don't need much of this stuff. Uh, so that's that. That'll help get your clone started. But to get your plants initially started, it's very inexpensive. You need a little bit of medium, and you need a place to put them. And oh, that's the last thing here. The place to put them. So I like these trays. Uh, they have little holes in the bottom. Uh, some of them, so the water will drain out. This one's solid, but the water will sit in here, and you can put a bunch of grow down cubes in here, or you can put these guys in here it's kind of cool because they fit exactly this way the water will drain out and you won't have water sitting right underneath causing a mess potentially picking up diseases um yeah basics starting of growing you need some of this stuff um and some of it's kind of luxury like the seed vault but it just makes that cool sound cool all right next you, you've done your seeds, your, your seeds have started growing, you've got clones that are ready to be transplanted, plants are, you know, two to three weeks old, uh, they're looking good, they've been growing in this, this little tray system, however you've been doing it, but you're ready to kind of move into the next phase, which is going to be transplanting and feeding. Uh, those first couple weeks you don't really need to feed, uh, you know, especially if you've got something that's got, you know, nutrients in it, like a basic potting soil. Uh, now, this, this doesn't actually fit in anywhere, and I probably should have talked about this at the beginning. Uh, we'll just kind of sidestep here for a minute. Uh, the rope ratchet. You're going to need a bunch of these things. They come in super handy, and you know the only thing I'll really say about them is, you can see there, metal gear and the little metal tab here. These things are way, uh, way more sturdy than the, the basic plastic ones here. And oh, 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 it, Of course, I'm going to go and break it. <laughs> No, I didn't. I just had it sitting kind of funny. Okay, so rope ratchets. You're gonna to want to get some of those. Now you got these little plants. You're gonna to want to put them into a big container. You got a few different decisions to make here. I like to step it up a little bit, unless I'm doing auto flowers. If I'm doing auto flowers, I want to go, you know, five, seven gallon, depending, uh, right off the hop, and never move that thing. Uh, you just get better growth, in my opinion. That's how I've been doing. I, mean, I haven't done a lot of auto flowers, uh, but as you'll see later on in the video, I think I had some pretty good success with these ones. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to determine how I want to move these things. So I'm going to probably put them in some sort of small half gallon. Uh, pot and then let them grow for a bit or put them into a gallon uh, you know the thing is you want to have some sort of succession plan and these things aren't expensive right you pick them up off the Amazon or from the garden store they cost you you know 10 bucks for 20 or 20 bucks for 10 or eh, whatever you're gonna pay but eventually you're gonna end up in something big the bigger you can the better because you want to have the biggest root system you can when you're pushing these plants into flower so this is a 15 gallon fabric bag and you can get these things actually relatively inexpensive. like you can see this thing's huge uh, you can get these things relatively inexpensive i think i paid for five 15s it was about 30 bucks but i've gotten like uh six two gallons for around 15 and these things are pretty good they're not the most durable but they they do allow the plants to breathe i've talked about this already in the other videos but the thing is you want to have a plan for stepping up your plant size you also want to have something for your plants to sit on uh after they've kind of gotten out of that tray that i was showing before so this is a riser this one's good for a five gallon uh and this will well i've got bigger ones of these but this is this is just the riser will sit in the tray all the big ones are being used right now this will sit in here now these uh i actually i got these on a deal at like five bucks a piece they've i've seen them fluctuate i don't know if you can find them for five bucks you're doing good and these again like a couple bucks a piece for these trays not super necessary but you don't necessarily want the the liquid from the plant draining down onto your floor and getting everywhere now uh just side note um this stuff panda film the stuff that's the black on the one side and the wood on the other this stuff is panda film um I put this stuff down in a few places. As you can see, I've got it acting as a curtain here on this side. And 
that stuff's also pretty cheap. I pay, I think about a buck 50 per linear foot. So 15 bucks for a 10 foot by 10 foot piece of it. Really good to have you put down under this stuff because, well, let's face it, when you're watering, eventually you're gonna make a mess. And about this point, you wanna look into getting that watering can because when you've got your clones and your seedlings, you're gonna, you can, you know, use like a little spray bottle to mist them with. I got some spray bottles here in the back. Um, just to, to not disturb the roots. But this is where you'll want like a watering can, for example, you got one of those. So you got a place to put the plants. They're now going under here. They're starting to grow a little bit more. You're also gonna need some shovels for scooping the dirt around. It's gonna have a couple different types. This is good for transplanting stuff because it's got that nice little narrow point on it. This is a scoop and shovel. So you can see here, it's good for getting in there and scooping lots of medium around. Anyway, plants are in there, they're growing, they've been growing for a couple weeks. Now, if you're a beginner gardener, this is new to you. This is going to be a nice little tool you're going to want to get. Now, these these little soil meters, moisture meters, these little soil moisture meters you can get for under 10 bucks. They say that they do light, they say that they do pH, don't believe them, they suck for that. They do work pretty good for moisture though, uh, measuring the moisture between these two little tongs. So you want to get this down, you know, three, four inches into the soil. Now you can see here on this medium, it's just a little on the dry side. Well, maybe you can't, I don't know. Matt, turn it the right way so your viewers can see what's on. But uh, this is this is good. You, you don't want to over water. Um, so plants have been growing good now and you're gonna start feeding them. Now, I'm an organic grower, so I do things like seed sprouted teas and compost teas. I don't have compost tea going right now, but I use these little jars for seed sprouted teas. So you can see I've got my corn soaking. I'll drain this later. I uh, check out my video on seed sprouted teas if you want more info on that. But what I like is these little mason tops lids. They they allow me to drain the water. I can put it back in. I can rinse. Uh, these are just handles. So I've got mason jars. Mason jars you buy a flat of them for like fifteen bucks. These things weren't the cheapest. They were like twelve bucks for two. So kind of expensive for lids. But that's what I do. I start feeding my stuff. I need to make compost tea, so I'll use. Uh, Sieve bags, filter bags, I don't know what you'd call them. Ultra fine mesh nylon bags. Sure, we'll go with that. These are for making compost tea. You put some compost in there, you put some earthworm castings in there and other stuff, and then you'll bubble them away with a pump. So a pump's gonna cost you 20 bucks. You get like five of these for 15 bucks. That's what I paid for them. Again, this is what I paid for them. Canadian prices, it's more expensive up here in the north. So maybe you're getting it cheaper down south, man. Cool if you are. Pump. Air pump, air stones, hose. This is for making compost teas. I put the I put the air stone in in the compost tea. I bubble it with the water. Uh, yeah, this stuff's not expensive either. Twenty bucks for this pump. I buy these air stones. I think I get these, two of these huge ones. They were about fifteen bucks. Uh, I got these other square ones. If you see these and you think they're a good deal, don't buy them. They're garbage. Okay. Finally, measuring stuff, right? You're gonna be starting feet, so you're gonna need some measuring cups and stuff. Like this is dollar store stuff, right? You can get these early on. Um, you know, little measuring cups, bigger measuring cups, bigger, bigger measuring cups. Have some some solids, have some liquids. Uh, again, if you're a, well, actually no, not again. If you're doing any sort of style of growing, you're gonna to need to be measuring stuff. So you're gonna need this stuff. Get that stuff. This stuff. Uh, I got a funnel here and uh, some little pipettes. Uh, these things are great for when you're you're just starting the plants early feedings and you're doing like liquids and you you just need a mill or two or something. So these little pipettes, they're they're fairly cheap. Uh, otherwise. Um, you're also going to start up your IPM, um, probably after a couple weeks, that integrated pest management. So this is neem oil. I've got some Dr. Bronner's up there. I put neem seed meal. I do that whole, again, organic stuff. So I'm staying organic. I'm not using any of those harsh pesticides, but you're going to want to start at that point. And then to apply things like that, oh, out of nowhere, I've got this pesticide sprayer. Pesticide sprayer? Well, I guess that's an organic pesticide sprayer. Ha ha! Uh, and yeah, that's what this is thing. That's that's just what is this is. That's that's what this thing is for. It's it's a sprayer. Now it's got the little move any direction nozzle. You pump it with the air. You spray. I'm not gonna spray it right now because I got insect frass in here and that stuff really stinks. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's the sprayer. So sprayer IPM transplanting measuring stuff. Oh, and the other thing I just about missed. I about these training you're gonna want to start your training 
Now, I do two types of stuff here for training. I've got a, a rubberized wire, and then I've got just like a twist tie. This stuff was, I think, like 300 yards for like $6. This stuff was 50 feet for like $15. Now, the way that I do it, here, let me just dig down on it here, is with these fabric pots, I'll attach a little, I'll do this so you guys can see, do a safety pin into the fabric pot, and then I do the twist tie. Oh, where's a better long one? Here's a long one. Long lead of twist tie off of it there, and then on the end again, I'll attach those those little rubber things. And it's just, I don't know, I find this system works. It's a little bit of work to do it, uh, but I don't know, my plants seem to like it. That's the second part. That's, you know, veg and getting things going. So let's talk about flowering and the stuff you're gonna need for that next. Okay, so veg cycle's done. You've, you've been feeding, things are going really well, you've been watering, plants are moving from your fence, la 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 la. I don't know why I did that. You're you're getting ready to flower, so you're gonna need, you know, well, I scrog. Do you scrog? Is everybody scrog? No, let's, let's scrog along, kids. Yeah, this is scrog netting. Uh, trellis netting, uh, this is a five by five. Here, I'll see if I can show you guys the square here. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Little square. Anyway, this is a five by five. I buy this stuff, I think I get five feet of it by 15 feet of it for eight, nine dollars. I just ordered a couple packs of this for like 16 bucks, uh, just for the outside garden. So this is for scrogging across, well you can't really see it. I'm just, I'm pointing at the scrog net that I have going on here in the, in the grow space. But that's for stretching across and helping support your plants. If you are doing the screen of green method, that's where of course you support your plants using the tallest net. So that's that's getting you going into flowering. Oh, um, I didn't touch on this yet. That was kind of loud. Uh, gaff tape. If you're growing in a space using, say, a tent or the black plastic that I'm using, occasionally that does kind of get holes. Uh, this black gaff tape, it's a nice, thick, solid fabric tape that's really good for uh, covering up those holes and stuff. I got another bigger roll of it somewhere. I just can't find it. After a while, you've been flowering. Plants are doing good. It's getting time to start taking pictures of them and inspecting those buds because you think you're just about done. Now, there's a couple different ways you can go about this. Um, well, most cell phones, um, you can take pictures with and zoom in. That's not too bad. Uh, this this newer phone, I gotta, I'm running an S10 here. Um, this has uh, the three different lenses on the back. So it actually has a, a close-up lens, so I can take some not bad pictures of the buds. Uh, otherwise, if I wanna really get close and inspect the trichomes, because that's the thing, is you're getting the end of the, the, the growth cycle, you inspect your trichomes to see how ripe they are. Uh, you want mostly cloudy with a small percentage of amber up to a medium percentage of amber, it just depends. That's that's something else there. Uh, but this is a jeweler's loop. This is for you know taking a look and seeing how uh, how done those trikes are. Now this works okay, but I'm an old man, and well, I'm getting to be anyway, and this is not the easiest thing for me to do. So what I've actually got, and this is totally not the cheapest way to do it, because this thing's like $15. Uh, oh, you can also get these little um, handheld microscopes. I don't have one, I've never used one. Uh, I believe they're around the same price as that, but I use this, this is a macro lens. This allows me to take some super up close, really cool pictures of the bud, and then I can inspect those. And I'm gonna be showing you guys my grow here after we're done this segment, so you can see how I use this macro lens to get those super up close shots. Now, I, uh, oh, I didn't talk about the string. If you don't wanna buy trellis net, buy, you can use string and just string that up. Uh, this is also good for hanging your buds once they're chopped down. And to chop them down, and to just do general maintenance, uh, well, you're gonna need some of these snips earlier on. This is probably for veg, but I just wanted to talk about the snipping stuff all at once. So I'm talking about it when we're talking about the flower state. But you're going to need a variety of cutting tools. So I have got some thin bladed uh, pointy shears here that need to be cleaned. I just finished trimming last night, so I haven't cleaned my tools off yet. That's what the ice was for, remember that. I've got some curved shears here as well. You can see the curve on that. Uh, mm -hmm. These are great for trimming buds. Uh, snipping branches, trimming buds. Both of these I think I paid less than $10 for. I've got some bigger bypass, I've got some bigger bypass pruning shears, uh, just for nipping them big thick stalks off. Uh, these are really great, and you know, scissors um, for cutting things like trellis knitting. 
And lastly, I've got uh, some razor uh, blades here and just a little holder. I use these for doing cloning. Uh, last week in the episode, we talked about cloning. So go back and just see how I use that razor knife if you're curious. So, so you know, you, you use your, your magnifying tools to look at your buds to see that they're done. You use your chopping tools to prune the, the stems as you need to, or you can even just pull off a leaf. Well, it's just that easy. If we get the snap here. Oh, didn't quite snap. There we go. Um, you can just pull the leaves off real easy. That's a cannabis leaf, kids, in case you're not familiar. It suddenly occurs to me that I've totally missed talking about something here that is actually really crucial, and this should have been talked about during the veg stage. One of these guys, uh, temperature and humidity monitors. I talked about the one that I put inside my seed vault, but I don't talk about the ones that are actually in my grow space. These things are awesome. They monitor both temperature and humidity, as you can see here. But what I like about these ones, and I'll see if I can get a little closer, a little reflection from the lights, but they have a, a max min low high for basically the last 36 hours. So I know that last night I got up to 74% in, in the flower room, which is actually kind of high, so I gotta get dehumidifying in there. Uh, but otherwise, I can see that my temperature's been pretty steady 20 to 26 degrees so these things are great they allow me to track i just clip that back on the pot there but like i said let's you're you're at the end of the grow you're 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 ready to uh to snip down so you've snipped your plants down and then what do you do you need to hang them to dry so you're going to hang them somewhere in a space i've done a couple things over over time this is a crudely bent coat hanger that well kind of it'll hold more space buds, or at least I thought it would. Um, really, this is not a great solution. Just to hang that there. What I want to show you guys, I just got this. I wish I had this because I just finished cropping out there. But look at this thing. Look at this thing. This is a, uh, well, it's a hanging rack of sorts. This cost me $16, and it's got space to hang 36 uh, different things. Now, I wouldn't completely fill this all up with branches. I'll probably do every every one, every other one. Uh, but yeah, this thing is really cool for hanging buds because you do need something to hang your buds up. So after your buds have hung and dried, then it's time, of course, to do the trimming and get those all ready to go. Now you're gonna need a couple things. Those little humidity gauges I was showing at the beginning of the veg segment, those are really awesome. Mason jars with a proper top to store your buds in. But when you're doing trimming, I like this thing. This thing is awesome. This is a trim bin. Uh, this was $70. This is not necessary. You can do it over a bowl. But what I like about this thing is it's got this mesh screen in, which, which actually gets all the keef out. So I, I've still got it in there. I was trimming last night. Um, and I can sweep up all the keef, and then I, I can recover that as well. So that just allows you to save stuff. Plus, it's ergonomic. It's something you just put on your lap, watch a little bit of the telly. I was watching a little Mandalorian last night. If you haven't seen that, that's a fantastic show. Loves me some Star Wars. And um, finally, finally, the last thing I was going to talk about here, um, you know, after you've flowered, after you've harvested, after everything's ready to go, you've got all that trim, you've got all that keef, what do you do with it? You make hash, bubble hash. These are bubble hash bags. Bubble hash bags. Um, these things are really cool. If you're not familiar, if you've never used these or seen this, I've got a cool video that I did a while ago on this. Um, go check it out. Uh, it's basically a mesh strainer bag. You've got this fine mesh on the bottom with the idea that um, the keef is... Uh, Bigger than 25 microns, but smaller than 200 microns. So you filter it through a series of these bubble hash bags, and you get basically bubble hash. You know, you, you well, just go watch the video and see how I do it. Bubble hash is awesome. So, so that's it. That's kind of all the little small accessories, when you're going to need them, relatively what they cost, and, and when you should buy them, because that's when you're going to need them, is when you should buy them. Or maybe before, if you get a good deal. I don't know, whatever. Look, hey, I hope you guys like the segment. Let me know otherwise. Uh, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions about any equipment that I used in that, uh, in that uh, segment, let me know. Uh, throw a question in the comments. I'm not going to go through and make a huge list of where I bought everything, but if you do have specific questions because you're having trouble finding something, more than happy to help you out. Otherwise, we're going to get going into the grow room now and see how uh, things have been going in the last week. Let's check it out. Starting off another week in the grow room here. Um, what I'm showing you right here in the back is that little bag seed plant that I uh, got going at the same time I got the ILGMs going. And 
I think the episode's already run where I've started doing some experiments, but uh, and it's weird shooting stuff in the past. Anyway, that's uh, that's what's going on there. This is that uh, Blueberry Auto, just like this one here, uh, which I'd started in hydro, went sideways, decided to turn around and plant into uh, just some super soilless, and I got a couple of clones here uh, for uh, for a buddy. So those will be out of here soon enough. Anyway, uh, the last of the autos that I am I'm doing uh, right now, anyway, other than I guess that little one that I've started, the last of the big autos that I, that I started. The other two, of course, I cropped out about a week ago. And uh, this girl's getting ready to be done soon. What's interesting though, and I don't know if I'll be able to pick it up on camera here. Let's see if I can zoom in. You can see right right there in that little space. It looks like there's a seed popping. Um, <laughs> I'll update again as, uh, whew, you touch that thing, it just gives off order. Uh, I'll update again as uh, then, you know, the next couple days go because I think I'm gonna be cropping her soon anyway. Uh, she's looking very close to being done. Otherwise, the ILGM girls are just exploding. Since I put them into the bigger pots, they've been doing exceptionally well. And you know, just the difference between the genetics. Uh, each each one is, uh, you know, a set here. So these are the strawberry coughs, uh, these are the Gorilla Glues, and then these are the gelatos. So the one gelato is really tall, the other one a lot fatter, but I think it's uh, just the way that I filmed her, because you can see this girl's got a lot of heads on her, uh, versus not as many as this one. And then, of course, that one was top, this one was auto top. I can really smell that blueberry here right now holy crap oh it just smells fantastic i can't wait to get into uh getting that thing chopped and cured anyway and uh you know the uh the coughs are, are doing equally well there otherwise uh veggies well yeah, veggies are doing great tomatoes loving life uh i'm just stoked because those sun golds are just bursting already uh, i love sun gold cherry tomatoes if you're not familiar they are delicious and of course the photos, the flowering uh, group here. Let's uh, get up on the ladder here a bit so you can actually see what's going on here. It is just a forest, just a forest in here. And uh, well, kind of give you a bit better. Oh, knock the mic around too much there. So the tuts, just the 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 internodal spacing is just fantastic. I think we're going to end up with some huge colas in there. Uh, otherwise, oh, I keep banging that microphone. Sorry for the rustling sounds there. Um, the the gookies. Gookies is is really sort of stretched out and kind of overtaken space here and a few of the others because you can see she's got some buds that are leaning over this way and the double chocolate. Ooh, looking wonderful. All these plants are doing just great. Really filled out this space nicely. We'll just drop the camera there. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's first day. First day of the week, well anyway, this week. Come on back for more tomorrow. Oh, what's going on on the cell phone? So I haven't talked about this too much before on the channel. And I thought I'd just bring it up now as, uh, well, as I'm getting into it. Um, it's important to have a regular routine, a regular schedule for your plants, especially if you're doing organic growing, for doing things like compost teas, seed sprouted teas, uh, adding things in like, uh, well, yeah, I'm trying to work around these hangers, uh, you know, recycle sill for your, your organic silica, that sort of thing. I'm not going to need oil over there. Uh, ha having a regular day when you're spraying, um, you know, doing that, that regular IPM. Anyway, uh, today's seeds for today it's Wednesday so this is something that I've started doing now is every Wednesday is seeds brought it's tea day um, this is something I've taken from uh, Cali grown buds uh, if you're not familiar with his channel I'll put something down in the uh, description there uh, his stuff is awesome I watch him all the time anyway we're doing mung beans for the uh, flowering we're doing barley for the vegging we're doing corn for both and we've got alfalfa for the vegging plants. So uh, everything, of course, doing really, really good. Uh, <laughs> it's a little forest in here. I love this. I just love this. I like coming out here and just staring at the forest of little trees. Uh, otherwise, you know, over here, uh, these ladies are doing great. You know. So just waiting for this blueberry to finish out. We are going to take that auto flower sitting right there and I'm just gonna directly repot it. I'm, I'm gonna pull the root ball out because there won't be that huge one and I'm gonna directly repot it. I'm gonna re-amend the soil and we're gonna continue growing in this pot in sort of a, 
no-till type experiment. And again, it's not true no-till. I'm not doing worms or anything like that. But I just want to see how it goes because I just want to see how it goes. It's all about the experimentation. And uh, otherwise, you know, we'll finish up uh, the daily uh, update here. Uh, there's something to be said for growing veggies and organics, folks. Uh, look at these sun gold tomatoes. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Wednesday. We're doing some feeding and stuff. set up tent I'm sure the wife would be impressed so uh, blueberry as you can see the plant is looking very very colorful now uh, drilling into that stem really pushed the fade senescence just completely kicked in now senescence is the state where the plant has put itself into finishing it's it's sitting there getting ready to uh, well you know basically finish now the the thing that's goofy about this whole grow here unfortunately is this these plants have kicked off some seeds. I've got seed here. I got a seed here. I got a seed here uh, I am not sure why I haven't seen any uh, Nanners or, or the male stamen uh, pop up um, to throw any pollen off I didn't notice any pollen coming off of any of the other autos uh, I haven't had anything else flowering in this space. So it's really weird why I've, I've got well seeds Although I'm sure I'll, I'll probably find something as I go here, but anyway we're gonna defoliate this girl, we're gonna pull off the rest of these fan leaves, then we're gonna get her ready to go into a couple days of darkness. So fan leaves come off, uh, I'm not gonna water anymore, it'll start really getting ready to go, two days of darkness, and then we chop, wash, and hang to dry. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, get her, let's get her defoliated anyway. And like magic, there you go. Uh, it's about as defoliated as I can get it. This plant's a bush here. I'm gonna decouple from the tripod I got it sitting on here. Okay. And zoom out. So, so yeah, there she is. She's she's all chopped, free-formed, reformed, deformed. I don't know what you wanna say. It's depressing because I have found a ton of seeds in here. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not depressing. Like, the, the, the buds really produce. I mean, this is a really nice looking plant. It smells just fantastic. So, it looks like I probably have some feminized autoflower blueberry seeds. Uh, I'm thinking giveaway. Well, we'll see. Anyway. <laughs> ILGM plants. Woo! You ladies are looking fantastic. I'm going to probably do another round of top in here. I'm thinking tonight tomorrow next day or two um because this girl's getting out of here i'm gonna have some more room i want to spread these girls out so we're gonna be doing that otherwise uh i'm gonna step out here um let me get the light here hold on a second there's a light here oh, there we go okay so you can see uh, that's all the foliage that we pulled out from there otherwise you're gonna turn that frame right back down here and uh yeah there we be there's the uh 
Connect photos. They're they're just continuing to do amaze balls. Um, I love that word amaze balls. They are so frosty already. I am just absolutely astounded. And uh, if you can see in the back there, those tuts. Look at that stack, and those things are going to just be solid colas. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, that's another day in the grow room, getting ready to shop and do all that fun stuff. You know, the one thing about growing. You know, the one thing about growing I find is there always seems to be some sort of a challenge, especially in this space that I have, because it's so subject to uh, hot and cold changes, uh, mainly because I don't have an air conditioner installed in here yet. I have one, I just haven't installed it in here yet. So as you can see here, oh, bumping the mic there, oh, that didn't rustle too much. Uh, we're sitting at almost 33 degrees here and 36% humidity at the very top of the, uh, the photo grow. So here, let's pull that back out. I mean, the ladies are looking fine. They're looking a little droopy down here. Um, you know, you can see they're just little, little lifeless. But again, it's almost 33 degrees up there, so it is particularly warm. Grab that is spiking a little bit because I turned all the fans off so I can film. So you know, like I say, it always challenges here in the grow space. I definitely have to uh, get the AC set up. Uh, the whole reason why this happened is it got it got really warm here um, today in Calgary. Uh, hit 20 degrees Celsius, which is uh, what is that like 68? I think Fahrenheit. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The fact is, it got a little bit warmer than it has been the last uh, few days. Uh, I'm starting to get in that nice spring weather here. Uh, the problem is, of course, that made me realize that, yeah, I got to get going on that cooling here. So, again, always a challenge. I'm not outwardly concerned. It's just I, my schedule has been pushed up. Um, you know, the other plants are liking it. Um, of course, these are the, uh, the tomatoes I've been growing here. And, uh, well... And playing the time back machine. Uh, if you saw, I guess it would have been uh, episode seven. Uh, these are those clones that I got going for part of that uh, experimental grow here. So just yeah, put into the uh, well, the veg slash almost done flower room. I think mean, yeah, GM grow is uh, ooh, looking fantastic. Oh, by the way, it's 4:20 here. So you know, happy 4:20 from two weeks ago. Uh, hope everybody stayed uh, safe at home and uh, smoked some fat. Day nugs and got really high and, and just you know enjoy themselves uh, in the comfort of their own homes and this is of course the blueberry she is stripped down uh, going into darkness tonight uh, I've stripped off all the families the ones that I could easily get to without moving these buds around too much I'm gonna have to cut her and do some more uh, trimming before we get her hung to dry but uh, yeah she's she's done so uh, we'll be kicking off I guess uh, the Grow Week, uh, whatever episode it'll be, uh, showing you guys how this thing's getting trimmed up uh, and, and hung and washed and all that other kind of fun stuff I do. So that's it. That's the end of the Grow Week. Uh, plants are looking great. ILGM Grow is going to be going into flower here. I'm going to guess in the next couple weeks because this space is going to be clearing out. So we'll have two flower cycles going. And, uh, well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that uh, other blueberry auto I have. I might just stick her under another light somewhere else. Anyway... That's this week's grow. Now this week on the Community Spotlight, we're going to flip things around in the sense that I am the uh, featured grower this week. Yeah, that's right. We finished up the uh, autoflower grow, so let's head on downstairs where I've been taking pictures and doing video just to show you guys of how well things turned out with this harvest. So let's check it out. All right, folks, rolling into the grower spotlight this week, as I just mentioned, it's all about me this week. Well, it, why? Because I finished a grow, I finished a harvest. I figured you guys would wanna see how these plants stacked up. So the very first one that we're looking at here is going to be the underperformer. Although the Jack Harar did produce some beautifully big buds, it only produced 40 grams of product, uh, simply because I topped it. That's, that's the thing, I treated it as a photo period uh, up until I realized it was was an auto and you know I just I could have grown this thing a lot different I didn't feed it as strong as I could have I didn't have it as big of a pot as I could have but you know what it still performed the the buds themselves definitely turned out to be nice big chunky buds wonderful sort of gassy fruity smell more on the fruity just a hint of the gassy in there and uh, well I'm waiting about another week to get into actually 
taste test in it, but I'm sure it's going to be a great one. Next up, we're going to be looking at the blueberry. Now, the blueberry was the most colorful of the batch for sure. She came in at just shy of 62 grams. Um, definitely a good performer. I could have probably grown this one a bit bigger had I done some more training and cleared out the interior of that uh, canopy a bit more, but this is the first time I've actually grown auto. So, hey, you learn, right? You learn. So, uh, I think uh, this has been a, a very good performance. So, the blueberry absolutely um, smells just like its name's sake. That very, very heavily fruity berry profile uh, the buds themselves well to be honest I over dried this by probably about a day uh, but that's okay I've got a bovetta pack sitting in there bringing that humidity back up slowly so I'm sure things will be just fine Finishing out the grow at almost 72 grams, the cheese. Ooh, the cheese. Really, really nice. Really, really happy with this mountain of buds that I got off this one auto flower. This plant turned out to be great. The, the buds themselves definitely smell a little bit more of that gassy, cheesy kind of smell, as per the namesake, and as per what you would expect from this strain. Uh, overall, you know, I think it turned out really, really well and super pleased with how it went. Now, at the end of the day, I actually ended up with some seeds off these plants. Um, I don't think it was a stress issue. I think the plants just I don't know. They, they, something seeded. Um, I didn't see any evidence of male flowers when I was trimming and bringing them down. I didn't see any evidence of of uh, nanners, of that stamen pushing itself up and, and throwing some pollen. So something happened and I obviously didn't see it. But hey, we ended up with a bunch of seeds. So eh, it's not necessarily a bad thing to get some auto flower seeds. Uh, but it did hurt the yield overall a little bit. Eh, at the end of the day, it was a good grow and I'm very pleased with the results. Okay, well, this is the end of the video. This is my garlic bed. You know, despite the fact that I live in, uh, you know, Western Canada, I do actually get stuff sprouting up early, you know. <laughs> this stuff sprouts up really early. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the show this week. Uh, if you did, again, uh, hit that like button. Leave a comment if there's uh, something that you'd like to hear me talk about. Otherwise, we're going to uh, get out of here, and uh, you guys have a great week. Let's see you uh, next Sunday. This is Photosyntech, the channel that's high on knowledge. We out.